The next question is, what are residual connections and their function in neural networks? So residual connections have a very important function in neural networks, and specifically, they try to optimize the performance of neural networks by combating the infamous vanishing gradient problem. The residual connections, they play a key role in deep learning architectures like ResNet, Transformers, uh, the, um, the GPT series, large language models, a third model. So if you look at the paper called Attention is All You Need, then you will most likely see as part of the architecture in each of these layers, beside of having the actual layer, you will also see this additional layer which says Add and then Norm. So this is exactly where the layer normalization comes and the residual connections are added. So what the residual connection does is that in this, unlike the typical neural network, uh, where the input is simply transformed through the weights and the bias factors into the corresponding activations to produce the output, in case of residual connections, we are adding the original input directly on the output of this layer. And this is often referred to as, as a shortcut or a skip connection. And the reason why it is called a shortcut or a skip connection is because the gradients are simply skipping through this transformation of this computational graph of being transformed towards the multiplication with the weights, adding bias factors, and then uh, using the activation function as transformation. And instead of that, it has also a direct shortcut towards contributing to the final outcome. So as you can see here, with residual connections, we have the output equal to the fx, which is the transformation. So it's the output of that layer plus the actual x, which is the input. So going back to this example of the transformer model in the original paper, attention is all you need. You might recall from the transformer architecture, this part, which is the left part, so the encoder part of the transformer model. It's also used as part of the GPT series, so the general pre-trained model, uh, where we are, so the transformer model, where we are using the input, uh, so the input embeddings on the top of that positional encodings uh, based on the sinusoids and cosinusoids. And then on that, after that, we are transforming this into queries, keys, and values, if you are familiar with the transformer model. And then this goes as an input to the multi-head attention layer. So if you are not familiar with this uh, architecture of transformers, just forget about that. Don't mind the details. Just think of uh, like this multi-head attention layer as a layer in your neural network that tries to learn the uh, interdependencies between elements of your sequence. So what we are doing here is that beside of providing this input, those, those positional encodings added on the top of the input encodings, uh, beside of giving that as an input to the multi-head attention layer, which then gives us an output, the transformed version, uh, we are also giving this value, this input, you can see with this arrow, going to the, on the top of that output. So we are getting the output from the multi add attention layer, and on the top of that, we are performing layer normalization, and we are adding the input on this output. And this is exactly what we are doing as part of residual connections. We are adding the input on the top of that output. Now, uh, the reason why it is called shortcut it is because when computing the gradients, uh, the gradient will then go through this transformation. We need to compute the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the weights. And for that, we first need to calculate the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the z-scores. And then we need to compute the partial derivative of the z-scores with respect to the weights. And then use the two and use the chain rule to compute the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the weights. Now, this entire transformation of these gradients will result, in many cases, the gradient coming very close to zero and vanishing. So this is the infamous vanishing gradient problem.
And to avoid this, what we are doing with residual connections is that we have also this shortcut. So you can see that we are not only performing this uh, different transformation. So we have X, then we have the weight layer, then we have the rectified linear unit activation, then we have weight layer, and then we are getting the output, which is the Fx. And on the top of that, we are also adding this X. So the initial input on the top of this output. This is what we are calling residual connections. And the reason why you can see that we have this idea of shortcut, so the gradient is able to flow into the network, not only through these transformations, but also directly towards the gradient, is because of this mathematical derivation here. So if we look at the output, y is equal to x plus fx, where x is the input that we are adding on the top of the output fx, you can see that if we take the partial derivative of this function, uh, x plus fx, with respect to the x, then what we need to do is we need to apply the chain. So we need to take the partial derivative of the e with respect to the y, then multiply it with the partial derivative of y with respect to the x which is equal to the partial derivative of e with respect to y, so exactly the same as we have here, but then multiplied with 1 plus fx, or f uh, first order derivative x, I have to say. Uh, and the reason why it is this value, because as you can see here, we need to take the partial derivative of y with respect to x, and as y is equal to x plus fx, when we take the partial derivative of x plus fx with respect to x, uh, using the um, uh, the rule for summation, the differentiation of sums, then this is simply equal to the derivative of the x with respect to x, which is 1, plus the derivative of fx with respect to x, which is f and then this not x, which basically is the first order derivative of fx with respect to x. So as you can see here, when we open this parenthesis, this is the same as taking the partial derivative of e with respect to y and then adding to this the partial derivative of e with respect to y times f not x and this is simply opening parenthesis so one multiplied with this value which gives us the first order derivative of e with respect to y plus and then we have this a second part of the uh, within the parenthesis which is the f not x multiplied with the uh, partial derivative of e with respect to y, which is simply the partial derivative of e with respect to y multiplied by f not x. So what we can see here, and the reason why I am explaining this mathematical derivation is that you can see for yourself that the gradient in this case uh, with respect to x will be able to not only flow through this part, which is the multiplied by f not x, which has gone through all these transformations of the weight and the activation function, but also directly, because we have here this term, partial derivative of e with respect to y. And why this is helpful and how this is reducing the vanishing gradient problem is because when we have these multiple layers, by the time we come from these very deep layers to the very earlier layers, our gradient goes through all these transformations of the weights, activation functions, and then it ends up becoming very close to zero. So it's vanishing. And if we have this opportunity for the gradient to go through the shortcut and flip through and skip some of the layers, we will have a higher chance of this gradient to not vanish and to actually reach from deeper layers to the initial layers. And that's exactly what we want to do. And this solves the problem of vanishing gradients.